you be dealing with Pel6? Who's using Pel6? Who's used it at all? Who's run anything in Pel6? The rest of you haven't you just kind of standing on, on the sidelines waiting for it to be useful? Yeah. Well, back in 2007, I gave a lightning talk at a few conferences where I said the base interfaces for open source languages suck. They all suck, including DBI. But uh, database interfaces in PHP and Ruby and Python, they all suck. Um, a lot of them, PHP and Ruby especially, have uh, modeled on the DBI, but often not with much uh, depth or accuracy. So they're all limited, they're all different, which is the worst soon. And even worse than that, they're all duplicating effort. There's all these developers writing the same kind of software over and over again in a different language, which is just silly. So thinking about it from the point of view of Parrot, where there's a goal of having a single virtual machine for all dynamic languages, wouldn't it be great if Parrot had some database drivers that all the languages targeting Parrot could reuse to avoid the need to, to rewrite them each time? But what would that database interface look like? What would a common database interface for all scripting languages look like? Well, I tried coming up with an API once, years ago, and it's worked fairly well, but it's, it sucks, it's hard work, and it's like herding sheep to get people to, uh, to, to use it, and then you want to evolve it, and then you have to uh, get all these developers to, to follow whatever path of evolution you want. It'd be much better to take an API off the shelf. So what would that look like? What would our shopping list be for an API that we could use for this? Well, that could be mature, stable, functional, object-oriented, well-documented with a test suite, very, very important, well known to a wide user base and well known to driver developers. Now, what fits the bill? What API do you know? What database interface yeah. API do you know that fits that bill? Uh, it's only one. Yeah. JDBC. I'm not talking about Java, I'm talking about the JDBC API. The classes, the method names, the semantics, the documentation, and the test suite. So, the idea here is, is uh, not just to take the raw JDBC but to sanitize the worst influences of its Java her heritage and make it easier to use for dynamic languages. <coughs> and just to, to clarify something that seems to cause quite a lot of confusion, here's your typical layer cake that you'd all be familiar with. Uh, that's the DBI a a API, and at some point down the road there's likely to be a DBI version 2. Okay, I don't know what that's going to look like, and I don't care right now. But what I'm talking about right now is this API here, which I'm calling the DBDI, it's the Database Driver in Interface. And in Perl 5, the DBDI is a horrible, um, fairly undocumented mess that driver authors have to struggle through to come up with something that they can plug into the DBI. So the idea is not, not to use JDBC for that, but to use JDBC for the DBDI part. <coughs> in order to have a strong foundation on which to build any future DBI for Perl, but also for other languages targeting Parrot to have a strong foundation to build a database API on top for their language. So the idea is the DBI part would become very slim, because it wouldn't have to do much, it would essentially be an adapter for the particular language. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, uh, I've started this project, uh, or I, I suggested it as a Google Sovereign Code project in 2007, <coughs> and Phil Pro jumped in and helped out. And what the idea here is to be able to, to point some software at the JDBC Java classes and get it to reverse en engineer the class definitions and spit out Perl 6 code. And that works now, it works rather well. You can say Java Perl 6 API, the type library, the output directory, and then give the Java class a set of Java classes. And it parses the Java class and spits out the, and loads it in, notices which other classes it refers to. So Java SQL driver manager refers to connection, connection refers to array, and array refers to results and so on. And it recurses through the tree of all the classes being used. Sucks them all in and then writes out the equivalent Perl 6. And this isn't code. This is just the API definition, the interface. So what does that look like? Well, that's the 
Java for fragment of the Java SQL statement class, which extends the Java SQL wrapper class. You've got a couple of constants there and a couple of methods for exceptions. And you can see the parameters. I've rewritten it, broken up onto on multiple lines, just so you can then contrast it with this, which is the equivalent of Perl 6K. So that gets read in, and that gets spit out. Okay, you can see here you've got the role that come out as roles, does the, the role that's being extended, you've got a couple of constants there, that's currently the slightly package way that we do constants. Um, Multi-methods there with the parameters and the return type. The, the exception is just put in as, as a comment in the middle. So that's what you get, and it writes out lots of this, which is pretty cool, and it all works. I mean, there's no actual code there, but it compiles. So what you've got is an interface definition that you can then plug in code behind. You just have to write Perl 6 code that fits this role, which is relatively straightforward. Okay, so that's what's happened over the last few years. In 2009, because you know I was flipping around with this in a half-hearted way and hadn't actually done anything useful, Martin Berens came up with this idea of the, uh, the fake DBI, which is now called Mini DBI which was designed to actually do something useful in, in the short term. A tiny subset of the DBI, just enough to, to get something working that people using Perl 6 could actually use it to talk to databases. And these two quotes are from his initial check-in of the readme. Hopefully to be obsoleted ASAP. Well, bit by bit I'm doing my best to obsolete it for him. Uh, so that currently has Postgres and MySQL drivers. That's grand. So we roll on to 2010 and YAPSI EEU in Italy. I finally pull my finger out enough to, to do something with this stuff and I started working on the, the DBDI. So on the one hand you've got this Java to Perl 6 converter that spits out the JDBC equivalent in Perl 6. But there needs to be a bit of code behind that to actually do something. And that's what the DBDI is. So it runs and there's now Postgres SQL driver. Now it runs, but it's very minimal. You can, you can connect and you can run select statements. That's about it. Uh, so here's a bit of code I'm going to demo. Basically, you can see here, oh, figures. use DBI, use a particular driver here, get a, get a URL, uh, connect DBDI, driver manager, get connection URL, just hard code, use any password. While a bit of SQL, Create a statement, create a statement handle, execute a particular query, get the metadata object. From the metadata object, get column counts and all the labels into the names array, print the names, iterate through the result sets. Uh, for the number of columns you have, get each column as a string, print it out. Trivial stuff. It, it's a bit ugly compared to DBI code, but remember we're talking about a lower level API here. So, who wants to see it run? Okay. <coughs> so, here we go. So, here's that script, and here's Perl 6 run, running it, and I give it the URL to connect to. That's uh, a Postgres URL. Now, it's a bit slow here. It's a lot less slow than it was in July when I gave this talk previously. Uh, there's a bit of debugging stuff. Uh, but that's connected to Postgres. Bigger font. Oh, bigger font, thank you. Okay. Just how big do we need to PG tables. Ta da! So there you go, that's Perl 6. Look. That's Perl 6 talking to Postgres. Useful stuff. Now, Okay, so this is where we are currently. Sorry, back in play mode. Yes? Uh, is it supposed to streaming when you have an interactor? Or do you put it for the data and say, time? Does it support streaming? Yeah, does it support iterators? Iterators, is it? E yes, okay. but depends what you mean by iterators. I would say, for instance, in general, the, the, the MySQL driver will do select. 
pull some of the data in one big bunch out of the database, right? Okay, okay, so the question of whether the driver pulls in all the records in, into memory and then gives them to you one by one, or whether it streams them in, that's a driver issue, it's not the DBI, the, the interface doesn't address that. that. I'm asking about this driver. particular Postgresql driver. I think the Postgres driver <coughs> is doing whatever the underlying library does. So I think the underlying well, library sucks them all in by default. Could you flip back to the terminal, please? Sorry? Could you flip back to the terminal? Flip back to the terminal. Are all those moves the nulls? They are. They right. are. And that's, uh, yeah, thank you. I should have explained that. The, the move, this is a slightly odd <coughs> thing, and I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. But essentially, in Perl 6, there isn't an undef. There are only undefined types. So it, it effectively, you have typed undefs. And the most undef, undef, <laughs> is moves. <laughs> uh, so, and you can read that as being <coughs> most undefined. Um, so really, the output, whenever you output that, I'm, I'm just doing a, a join, and so it comes out like that. But whatever you're using to output should substitute something same for right. a null, but by default you get that. Okay. Okay. So this is where we are now. Uh, basic but functional on the mini DBI side, and then the DBDI bare skeleton, but this is likely the way things are going to evolve. Okay, so where we are now, what happens next? So the idea is to build up the, the implementation of this uh, class and role hi hierarchy, borrowing from open source JVC drivers. There's a lot of open source JVC drivers out there. There's a lot of experience writing JVC drivers. There's a lot of code to steal, steal <coughs> borrow from. Part of that then, or kind of part of that process, we should be trying to separate out the driver-specific code from the, the more general driver infrastructure code. So that the effort required to write a driver is reduced because you only have to focus on the bits that are driver specific. And also I want to establish an infrastructure for logging and exceptions and so forth. And that's kind of where I got stuck because I actually want to do it backwards because I don't want people to have to write a lot of code with logging built in only to then rip it out when it's done automatically. Perl 6 allows you to do really amazing sort of metaprogramming things. So I'm trying to work on a solution that adds logging to classes retrospectively at runtime if you want the logging. It sort of wraps all the methods with logging. So at some point in the future, uh, the idea is that mini DBI here has a test suite. So if somebody writes a mini DBI DBDI driver, then we can go this way and use the mini DBI test suite to test the DBDI. Kind of cool. So then we can start sucking the brains out of the mini D DBI code, and eventually uh, everybody would be using this, and this would get to the same level of functionality as mini DBI, and then people would stop using mini DBI and switch. That's that's the plan. Uh, unfortunately, that's exactly the same plan as it was in July, and nothing's happened. When I wrote these slides just before YAPC e e EU. Um, actually, just I added this slide during the EU EU because I'd seen a talk about Blizzcost. And Blizzcost is a project by Jonathan Worthington <coughs> to allow Perl 6 to talk to Perl 5. Actually, you, you load Perl 5 into the, the parrot process and they, they communicate within the process. So I added this slide and then uh, during, just before lunch, during a talk that when Jonathan gave about it. And then during lunch, I said, well, I've got a couple of hours before I give my talk, so why don't I try doing it? Okay, so that's what I did. I then wrote a DBDI driver that uses Blitzcost to talk to Perl 5 in the same process and talk to any DBI driver. So now, that was the PG, see, down here, DBDI, PQ. Now, 
this dBi, what you put after that colon can be any Perl5 dBi URL. So, it takes a bit of a while to compile all, all the stuff. Like I say, it's faster than it was in July. It was embarrassingly long in, in, in July, which was kind of funny. So let me just slide that in. So there you go. That's using Perl 5 DBI from Perl 6. So, Nicholas. Your notes have changed. <laughs> well, it's possible. That's because A, it, it's a complete hack. Uh, and because it's a complete hack, they come back as empty strings. And, and I'll show you how much of a complete hack, hack it is shortly if I have time. I'll show you some actual code. Because it's important to note that the amount of code behind this is actually really small. Because it's built on such high level foundations. Okay, so. That was really amazing, and it went down very, very well at the talk that I was able to hack out a Perl 5 driver for Perl 6 DBI so quick. So, where we want to get to in the end is we need DBI fades away. We have a DBI version 1, 2, 3, whatever, built above the DI, the drivers. But really importantly, up here, there's a large JDBC test suite. And by waving a sufficiently magic wand, I hope to find some way to be able to use the JDBC test suite to test the DBDI, because that would just be awesome. Uh, and there's a couple of approaches that I'm looking at for that, but I'll save for another talk, because I really want to show you some code. Any questions? Stand all that. Stand in silence. <coughs> okay. So, let's show you the driver source. Now, this isn't driver source. This is how Perl 6 talks to Postgres. This is the equivalent of XS. And it uses a native call library from one of the, another one of Jonathan Worthington's projects, Zavalage. And basically, this is all you need to call a C function in an external library. That's pretty awesome, really, isn't it? Now, similar technology is coming to Perl 5 in the, the C types. Someone's doing C types. And his name is escaping me at the moment. Leo. The other Leo. Yeah. Uh, so, good thing is coming to Perl 5, but this is awesome. So, this little page of Perl 6 code is all you need to talk to Postgres. I mean, it's, it's minimal at the moment. There should be some other, other functions in there. But that's it. So that's kind of the underlying foundation. At the top level, here's what here's the module that you load into Perl 6. You say, um, I want to use this driver. And by convention, it lives in the DBDI directory. And all it does is it says, uses the DBI, uses the underlying driver class, and then it registers the driver using the driver manager. Okay, that's pretty simple. There you go. Here's the driver. And that uses the SQL, Java SQL driver role and the connection role. It uses the connection class that I'm just about to show you. And the PG, the PQ driver, does the role of the SQL <coughs> driver class. It's a multi method connect. This one takes a string and a hash and returns a connection. Fail if it doesn't begin with the URL that I'm de dealing with. The way the driver man manager works is it asks each driver in turn, can you handle this URL? So we just return immediately if we can't handle it when we're interested in it. Strip off that prefix and create a new connection object. That's pretty trivial, yes? Okay. Down here is where we actually load that uh, libpq library that I showed you. I'll skip down to the bottom here. This is the connection class. And the connection class does the connection role. There's a new got the URL, hash info, we return a connection. Uh, there I just expand out into all the information needs. That's a hack, so I just throw in local host and stuff like that. That's where we call the underlying library to get a connection from Postgres. If it's failed, we throw an error. Otherwise, we bless it. 
Uh, that's it. That's created a connection. Here is a method on the connection object where we can we can create a statement handle, and all we do is call new in our statement class, which is up here. There's a statement class. Uh, so the new method, it's just you get the de default one. The only thing we need to implement here is execute query. And what we do here is we call the Postgres library to execute a query. If that's failed, we throw an error. Otherwise, we bless the result into a result set class. Result set class is up here. Uh, does the result set role. There's the iterator where we just uh, in increment uh, the index of the result we're on. It's just the way the Postgres library works. Here we're getting a string. There's the mu if it's a null. Otherwise, we get the value. <coughs> get metadata. What we do here is uh, call the results of metadata that I'll show you. It's just above and cache the, the result. And there's the results set metadata. We get a column count, number of fields, and we get the labels. That's the entire code in the Postgres library. That's it. Okay. It's not much to it, is it? And it's not very complicated. Now, it's, it's minimal. There's a lot more that should be added. But the point I want to go across is this is pretty simple stuff. If you want to work on this, if you're interested in writing a driver for a, a database, get involved. You know, all that's missing is, is some time. Just contribute some time and this will happen. Okay. Yeah. Any, any questions about that? No? So, well, that's it. That's it. That's the end of the talk, I think. Questions? Come on. Come on, I'll start staring at people soon. I thought this was. So, is anybody interested in using this soonish or helping out? Well, that was actually my question. I was wondering um, how long do you think it's going to be before this will be suitable for production use? I mean, I know how long is a piece of string and all the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, and, and your production use isn't the same as my production use. Indeed. Um, about this one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's, that's a how long is a piece of string question. Have you got any ideas for speed improvements that you haven't managed to implement yet? No, because it's not my problem. Uh, there's, the code I've shown you is so tiny that there's nothing in there to optimize. You know, what, what code did you see there that needs optimization? Yeah, that, that's you kind know. of what I was thinking. What it's the underlying frameworks. It's Perl 6 and Parrot that need, need work. Um, what I can tell you is that Perl 6 and Parrot have been implemented with optimization in mind. And so the design process of the language has taken into account what would help optimization in the future. Yeah. So potentially, Perl 6 could end up being significantly faster than Perl 5. There's no, there's no when single we get there, path through that, that your stack uses. Sorry? There's no single path through that, that your code uses that you think actually is. This particular feature on Parrot or whatever is the one that's slowing it down. No, I haven't bothered looking. Okay. Yeah, it's really way too far away from that point. I'm just going to expand on the optimizing, uh, designing it right. One of the biggest problems you'd have in trying to um, implement an optimized backend for Pod 5, in my view, is that any variable could be tied, and you have no clue about that until one's suddenly presented to you. And in <coughs> Pod 6, specifically, things are not allowed to be tied unless they're marked as tieable. Which means that if you're writing in a subroutine, you're not going to have weirdo esoteric things coming in, but um, you have to cope with them not being not being a simple scalar. There's other things Larry's done, like smart match rules are intended to um, be able to compile down to, to, to be able to be determined as a dispatch table at compile time, if possible. He's thought a lot about how to actually implement the thing. So there is hope that it's going to get quite a lot faster and actually ultimately be faster than Perl 5. Oh, as well the fact that things can be typed. Because the other problem you have with Perl 5 is it's not just it can be typed, but who knows what's coming. It might be a string at this point, but it might turn into an integer. Actually, it's usually the other problem. It was usually an integer, but suddenly somebody threw you a string, which means you have to do something different. 
obviously. So it is well thought through, it's just not there yet. Yeah, and quite a big value there, unfortunately. And Parrot's going to get a JIT much sooner than Pearl 5 will get a JIT. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, that's it. We're done. Any questions? Come on, let's put me some more. Anybody itching to put their hand up? Hey. Have you seen anything vaguely similar in, in other communities, other languages? Is it just. The 36 madness <coughs> to the BI level, or is it something uh, research communities have been discussing or something like that? Um, I haven't <coughs> seen anything in other languages. The short answer is no. Um, I haven't actually tried very hard to look. My impression is that Python and Ruby and similar languages kind of came after um, came after Pearl 5. The D Pearl 5 already had the DBI, so they just said, well, let's do something DBI-like. Pearl 6 is giving us an opportunity to radically change things, which kind of gives the DBI an opportunity to radically change things. By adopting JDBC, you, know, you could argue it's old technology. But essentially, JDBC is very similar to the client library API provided by the database programs. And that's because essentially databases are very simple things. They return rectangular results sets. So, you know, there's not that much to it. There's some fancy transaction stuff if you want to get into to those things. Uh, but essentially, they're simple. And JDBC is kind of the best, the most mature API to that simplicity. The one fly in the ointment that I'm very conscious of is the fact that JDBC doesn't address uh, concurrency, or it doesn't address asynchronicity well. The Java approach, you say, is just a start a separate thread and do your database work in a separate thread. So that's kind of an architectural solution rather than an API solution. So I'm conscious of the fact that I need to be aware of that going forward as to how um, how the DBDI addresses asynchronous issues. I don't have an answer right now because Parrot and Bell 6 don't have answers to that. They're still trying to work out concurrency more. And but I'm, I'm just I'm aware that it's an issue and I'm keeping an eye on it. The best I can say at the moment. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, uh, I've got examples of uh, Code written not in Perl 6 but in a different language running on the Parrot platform using your driver. Okay, so you're saying you, you have already code in another language? Or, or uh, yeah, did, did you try it with another language? Uh, okay, and you want to be able to use this? <coughs> yeah. Because that's, that's the idea behind it, right? It is. Yeah. Now, that's, that's possible. But I haven't tried it yet. What uh, the POSIX code compiles down to p .pir files. Mm -hmm. um, if if you ask it to, and the .pir files are parent intermediate representation, so you can then take that code and call it from um, a different language type of language. I haven't tried, so I can't say much more than that. Other than it, it just should work. Yeah. Any more questions? No, I think we're done. Thank you.